Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Adventures in Arcane Space. Once again, I am your Dungeon Master, All Dragon, and the players are... Hi, I'm David Bingmech Shepard. I play Braxton Miak, who's a human fighter and the first officer, and about to be captain of a Nautiloid. Hi, everyone. I'm Daika Misama, and I play Solas Abebha, who is a half-eleven cleric mage of Ogma. Hey, guys. I'm James. I play Akar... A human paladin of Tear from Brawl, and I am doing whatever I can to have internet to be here today. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Salen Motor. I'm playing Finalar Mahani, a druid of Obadhai from Grayspace. Obadhai. Hi. I'm Levalithana, an elven wild mage from. She doesn't have a foggiest idea where from. <laughs> Hello, I'm Zakad. I play the character of Laftal Minglade, a specialty priest thief, multi-class elven, and he's from Realmsfit. Did I say Realmsfit? Yeah, that's one of these things with my character. It's very confusing, especially with his title, the eager and enthralled eldritch magnificent macabre mortician. Oh my god, that's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a gimmick with my uh, characters that I've got to come up with a custom title each week oh. so Why and, and, and this is be something you can't actually say though and let's be clear this is a gimmick that you created for yourself i he made it more difficult than the that yes, <laughs> he did but he's got the he's got good help from me i i give him good new words to use from time to time <laughs> definitely uh inspires me but that way Feels like it's... you're using a word of the day calendar and just and, and just collecting the entire week. That's worth what of Lever. Words. That, that's what um, Lever has been uh, suggesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so hello, Kikoskia. Yes, we uh, did just get a, a very large raid from Kikoskia. I really do appreciate that. Thanks for the raid. Does mean a lot to me. Uh, we left off last session. Um, you were just getting your. Ships separated from the ram attack from the Illithid Nautiloid. Uh, I'm going to move further out into the Phlogiston to hopefully uh, avoid some uh, other ships and things like that that might be uh, traveling around. And I wanted to uh, quickly have you guys uh, um, kind of meet the some of the individual NPCs that uh, had been knocked out in the uh, the fight. Oh, yeah. Before we separate, so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Just because gonna... they probably wouldn't be uh, unconscious for eight hours. <laughs> no, no. No, we would be asleep, though. So the, cat, yeah. the three that of us are asleep, so. Yeah. All right, I'm going to leave myself mute. All right, so um, there's a dwarf, a gif, and an elf. Uh, that, We've also uh... got those... those um kobolds and uh orcs sent me yes but none of you speak orcish or kobold so yeah <clears throat> you are not able to communicate with them uh so the first one to uh awaken is the elf um and mm -hmm. he he was uh left in your helm room when the uh elithids teleported back to their vessel Oh, yeah. Uh, I believe you tied him up, so he is still tied up. Um, yeah. But uh, Braxton, you and Higamus uh, would basically be brought to him as uh, some of the crew guarding him uh, noticed that he was coming around. Yeah, I believe he was a spellcaster. Yeah. I think... Uh, uh... Oh, there's, there's a question that Lever had that we deferred to this time. Okay. That was whether the ESP spell would uh, would actually help with recognizing the thoughts of people whose language we don't understand. Uh, I believe you can use that to pick up thoughts. Uh, I think... Let me uh, double check. I had forgot about that question. Sorry. So, no, telepathy does. Can Akar be in charge of keeping an eye on the prisoners since so I can use my detectable intent and gauge if they're about to try something? Sure. That's a okay. good idea. Yeah, you could uh, you could have taken up uh, um, a guard duty over them. Uh, I would assume that you yeah. put the uh, kobolds and orcs in uh, one of your crew quarters just as a case of, uh, you know, I mean, there's there's a fair number of them. So you don't... Yeah, I'd be focusing my attention mainly on them. All right. 
And Lobo has Would it? Uh, when she when she wakes up she ha and and gets her spell done spells done, then she uh, memorizes memorize two ESP spells. Okay. Well, um it's gonna be a number of hours before you're awake anyway, so Yeah. Okay. All right, so um, never be earning sense at the moment. Um, would it would it have been worth us moving any of the people? I know we had two on the front deck; they'd have kind of been in the way, wouldn't they? Yeah, you probably would have taken them all down below decks uh, so they could be more easily watched. And I think we probably would have moved that elf out the helm room. <laughs> well, yes, yeah. Uh, so the. Um... Uh, Ocker, you'd be uh, guarding them all, um, and I guess you would probably be the one that would notice then that the uh, the elf is beginning to uh, come around. And I'd send uh, somebody to get Hagemus and uh, Braxen. Okay. Mm. All right. Yeah, Braxen had come in, wiping a bit of sawdust off himself. So he uh, he looks very confused as he's uh, waking up. Um, Ocker, would you be using your Detect Evil Intent right away, or would you yeah, wait? Yeah, right away, okay. as he wakes up, to make sure he doesn't try to escape. All right, or you, do anything crazy. You're not detecting any evil intent from him at this time. Okay. Finally awake? Oh, what? oh my, my head. Where am I? He's He clearly looks in... Uh, pain. I mean, he's he's been wounded, um, and you've stopped the uh, the bleeding and stuff like that. But uh, he also um, kind of looks like someone who's just been on a binge drinking spree, well beyond their capability, and is uh, and that the hangover is hitting him. You're on a bell, Delphin. Braxton says to him, do you oh. remember Elithids? Yeah, you, we, we just uh, saved you from some Elithids who had been using you as their servant. I, I, th there's something, it's, it's all a blur. I, 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 can't, I feel like I can't quite focus on, on it. Uh, well, well, they probably messed up your brain pretty bad making you their slave or whatever. So who are you? Uh, my my name is Meryl Dane. I'm I'm a crew member, uh, uh backup helmsman and battle mage for a Cyndiath Line vessel. But I feel like that was some time ago. But I I don't. I, I it's hard to to put my mind together here. I I don't know what's been going on i'm going well basically for some time you've been work you've been forced to work from for some mind flayers as uh one of one of the uh captive slaves kind of looks at you in a bit of disbelief but then you kind of see a dawning realization come over him uh we don't know what happened to your ship, um, but we're intending on checking into the Cindy line at some point. You see him just kind of like shudder and close his eyes real tight, and he says, "Oh gods, it's been it's been decades." Are are you planning to what what what, what vessel is this? Uh, it's the blade. We were planning on going to Fort Space, and then we ran into the uh, the Nautiloid. It attacked us because we had something that they wanted. That it had. Oh, we had something it wanted. Yeah. Uh, we are still pretty close to Brawl Space, so if you need us to drop you off there, we are not going back to Brawl Space. Uh, well, we're heading to Fort Space. If you want us to drop yeah. you off there. I, um, I don't recall if there's a Cyndiath Line or Imperial Navy outpost there. Uh, and you're, you're probably welcome to stay with us if you want to carry on. Um, we have a job after that to investigate a ship that's been attacking 
Cindy has lined ships in a different crystal sphere. Yeah, uh, cr- uh, Crin's base. I, I obviously would not expect you to take a detour just for my sake, but I, I, I do need to get... If, if there is a Sindiath Line outpost or an Imperial Navy outpost in, in this forge space, you said, uh, yeah. then yes, I, I, would, I would very much like to be uh, left there. Sure. Let's uh let's see what we'll we find when we, get when we get to uh when we uh, when we get uh to the hammer, right? Is that the place we're heading to, right, Paul? Uh no, the hammer was the uh, the primary. Yeah, you're going to the anvil. Yeah, when we get to the anvil, we'll ask the dwarves there if they know of any uh city of liner or uh elven navy outposts. Thank you. I... Uh, and I thank you for your for freeing me from this. It's my mind is it's starting to put itself back together, I feel, but I'm going to need some rest and time to figure this all out. Yeah. Uh, well, take we'll, your time. I'll, still, I'll be right back. We'll check over you, make sure the effects of the mind flares is worn off. I do appreciate it. Uh, do you need some food? I think I would appreciate that. Yes, yes, and and some yeah. water if you have some. Yeah, we'll get you some food and water. Um, can you remember what crystal sphere your ship was in? He uh, he seems to be concentrating for a moment, and and then says, "I believe we were in great space." Great space. And. We were attacked by Neogi, I believe. It, it's, it's hard to to focus on on my memories, but those are more clear than than the others, the more recent ones. But I, I think that was oh decades ago at this at this point. Right, I don't think I've heard of Great Space. You've heard of Great Space. All right. You're you're aware of it. It's one of the... It's one of the known spheres. Okay. Okay, so I've heard of Great Space, but I've never been there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll find some Cindy line for you. Uh, Braxton... uh, Calls over a crewman and... uh, Asks him to get some food and water. Right away. So they, uh, he goes and gets some, uh, um, uh, just some simple, uh, preserved meat and, and bread and cheese and, uh, a large mug of water, uh, brings it to him. Um, he's still tied up. Are you going to untie him? What do you think, Hooker? He'd be right, right back. Ah, uh, right. Okay. <laughs> um... Then I guess uh, Brax will wait till Ocker confirms that uh, he's not being mentally controlled by lithids. Well, you do have crew in here right now, so... Yeah, but Brax is very cautious. All right. <laughs> I mean, he's not going to be able to eat until you untie him. Yeah. Okay. Um... I guess Braxton will untie his hands and say... Um... When the food arrives. Okay. So hopefully we'll be able to give it these precautions. Uh, do you give us your word that you will not attack us? Uh, yes, I, I have no no reason to do so. I, I want to get back to my people. Okay. I'll, we'll just get one of our spellcasters to confirm that the evil influence of the Mind Flayers is gone from you. I thank you. Uh, is there anything you need to ask us? You think you've been captive for decades. How old... Uh, how do you, how long ago was... How do we work out how long ago something was? Uh, have you ever been to Brow Space? Yeah, he, uh, he gives you some... What he would consider current events right. from Brawl. Uh, and that's those are things that were happening about 20 years ago. 
Yeah, okay. So Brexit says, oh, yeah, that seems like that was about 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, I'll make sure to get you back to your people. So what do you think, Ocker? Um, do you think he's clear of the influence of the Mind Flayers? Uh, I don't detect any evil intent from him, so I think he's mostly on the up and up. Yeah. If you keep an eye on him for any resurgences, of course, but yeah. Well, Brax has already untied his hands so, for, so he can eat. Should we just let him... Yeah, just make sure the crew keeps an eye on him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um... You untie his, uh, uh... hands and feet, um... And he, uh... Gets to eating and drinking. He, uh, seems quite hungry. Yeah, I imagine they weren't feeding him very well. As a player, wouldn't we be going uh, through Brala space to go to Green space? You might, but that's still uh, a month away. Yeah. Um, Braxton meant that you're not going to immediately turn around and go back a week to get yeah, to Brawl. Yeah, 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 of course, but uh, he, he could be with us uh, until we go back to Brala. Yeah. Yeah. I leave that up to that guy. Our, our mission is more important than, than delivering him to Brow. I mean, there's He's, a pretty good uh, chance like a... that at some point uh, you'll be stopping off at yeah. a place that has uh, either a Cyndiath Line office or a uh, Imperial Navy outpost. So Yeah. Well, my plan is to ask the dwarves if they know anything. It seems like our best bet. Yeah, I mean, they... they... They might. Does they probably know about the other spheres around them? And, I mean, a forge space is not exactly a backwater, so he may choose to be left off there and uh, um, find his own way. Yeah. But, yeah, no, he's not going to expect you to turn and, and head back a week to brawl, so... All right. Um, you also have a uh, a gif and a dwarf. Um, do you want to wake one of them up specifically, or do you want to let them awaken on their own? Uh, did they look bashed up? I mean, yeah, they've been beat up. Um, you've you've tended to their wounds, but not actually like healed them. Okay. Well, what what the reason I'm asking that is. If they heal by sleeping in, we'd probably let them sleep in. No, that's not gonna. They're 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 tied up. They're not getting a good night's rest. Okay. Um. So um. Braxton turns to Higamus and says, "You know the gif, but we don't know the dwarf." Uh, should we get the dwarf out of the way first? Because uh, he, he's less likely to be able to fight us all. Or uh, Higmus, what was the deal with the gif? Higmus says that uh, he'd much rather um, awaken the gif and uh, confirm. I'd, I'd like to confirm that he is who I think he is. This would be a great day for gif kind if he is. Oh, he's like some sort of famous gift that's missing, is he? If I'm correct, um, I he was said to be dead. Oh, interesting. So captured in battle, maybe. Yeah. Okay. But ultimately, it's up to you. Yeah. What do you think, Oka? Yeah, I think we should go along with that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so, Higamus points out that uh, uh, he's got a uh, rank of captain. He can see it from the insignia. Um, and uh, you uh, gently revive him, and he uh, he kind of gives a, a start. Whoa! No! 
and looks around and, and says, Where are the goblins? Uh, there wasn't any goblins. Uh, that was illithids making you think there were goblins. He narrows his eyes at you and uh, turns to uh, Hegemus. Uh, report, is this true? Uh, Hegemus uh, confirms that it is indeed true. And um, tells him, it seems you were under the influence of these lithids. Uh, you were fighting us, uh, believing that we were that we were goblins. Hmm. Hmm. Would have liked to have killed some more goblins. Ooh. What what ship am I on? You're on the blade. Hmm. Don't know it. It's a battle uh, dolphin. Uh, Higgins is our commanding officer. Yeah, we're uh, the company of the broken sword. So when he says he doesn't know, I just imagine the Higgins's air tufts going down. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> 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 Well, at the same time, uh, uh, Higamus uh, may have mentioned uh, previously that uh, if this is who he thought he was, uh, then he was believed dead six years ago. So, Higamus isn't going to be sad that he doesn't know something that, that happened <laughs> while yeah. he was supposedly dead. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're in the... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, Braxton says to him, uh, what was your name, sir? Marine Captain First Class Thogus, 273rd Mercenary Squadron, Brawl Space Division. Stogus? Thogus. Thogus. And, uh, oh, well, Higamus, Higamus, we're out, bro. Higamus, uh, um, uh, you, you see, you know, a big smile, um, stretch across. Uh, Hegemus's face, and you realize that that his belief is correct. Um, Hegemus turns to you and and says quietly for a gif um, that yeah. uh, uh, Thogus is, made a name for himself um, years ago uh, when he was a, a passenger on a tradesman was attacked by a Neogi death spider, and, uh, you know, I mean, a, a, a tradesman against a Neogi death spider, there's no chance of victory there, um, as, you know, anyone would know. But um, he and his platoon, which were just on this ship to get from place to place, they weren't, they weren't hired mm -hmm. to protect it. Um, as, as the Death Spider came in and grappled the tradesmen, they immediately led a boarding action themselves against the Neogi, and uh, what, Thogus himself rolled a barrel of smoke powder onto the bridge, blew it up, uh, and that saved the tradesmen, most of their crew, and uh, amazingly, four members of the platoon. Right. Of twenty. So mm. to to Higmas, this is like he he's he's telling this as as you know a, a great war story, a, a hero's tale kind of thing. So you know, for surviving in the you know against these odds, these are these are heroes in in his eyes. Mm. Um, and H Higmas says uh, that the. Uh, Thogus's platoon was uh, you know, disappeared um, something like five years ago uh, right. in Great Space. Oh, also Great Space. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, they were supposed to be uh, there fighting a, a, a vessel of Grell that were uh, causing problems. Everyone believed that they, you know, the, the Grell weren't uh, um, a problem after that, so everyone believed that it was, uh, you know, that the, the platoon mm -hmm. died in uh, glorious combat, destroying them. Do you recall any mind flayers? Uh, Thogus, uh... Thogus. You... 
I... Hmm. Yes, 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 yes. We were attacked, coming back from that, uh, that great victory. Uh, Lithids attacked us, and... I don't really remember any Lithids after that. It was all <laughs> other Giffen goblins. We fought many goblins. You see kind yeah. of a, a realization come over his his face. And I don't I don't think that any of those were goblins. Hmm indeed. And I think the other gif were not gif. No other, other gif were ca you, no, no other gif were on board when you saved me, rescued me? No, just some kobolds, orcs, a dwarf and an elf. Hmm. Yeah, all as innocent as you, I believe. Oh, uh, relatively. That is... That is worrying. Well, we're going to have to keep an eye on you for a while uh, in case uh, there are still any effects of uh, whatever it was the uh, Elithids were doing to you. But uh, it seems like you're regaining your faculties. Indeed, I, I understand, understand. Yes, I, I will need to uh, get back to Brawl as soon as I can. I, I understand you are likely on a mission right now. I would not want to interfere with that, and I'll put my services in your hands for the duration. But uh, we are, at your earliest we are convenience, I would appreciate to being dropped off at Brawl. We yes. are based on Brawl, so we will be returning at some point. Yeah, for now we're heading off to Fort Space, and we'll probably go through... Uh, Brawl Space on our way to Crit Space later. Understood. Um, Braxton, Braxton uh, looks over at Oko and sort of twitches just, his head towards him. I'm looking at the... Uh, I'm just basing it on the map of the paths. I don't think there's any way to get from Crit Space from Ford Space without going through Brawl Space. No, no, Braxton's, Braxton's sort of... Um, waggles his hands... <laughs> I think I think Braxton is hinting, is he evil or not? <laughs> I think oh, someone right. just spoke I'm... up when they're asleep. Uh, right. I'm going to be uh, using uh, detect evil intent on him while we're doing the talking. Uh, you are not detecting any evil intent. I I just give uh, Braxton a thumbs up saying he's good. Right. So um, Braxton's going to untie his hands and feet. He says, I, I'm sure you'd like something to eat and drink. Oh, indeed, indeed. Um, hmm. I've heard of a, 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 a... There's a drink that you may have heard of that's uh, very good. I, I, It's called coffee. Do you have any of that? We have tea. Mm, I'll take some of that. Okay. Uh, I'm sure Higamus can hook you up. Uh, Higamus, uh, um, says, uh... Will take some time, but I, I will get you. Uh, I'll get you some uh, hot tea. Um, we uh, need to question this dwarf here first, though. Right, right, yeah. understood. So you uh, you get some. You get a crew member to bring him some more. Uh, yeah, and some leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case he eats leaves. Vegetarian food. Well, he doesn't need to eat vegetarian food. Yeah, mo most uh, GIF are omnivores. Yeah. Uh. So, um, Higamus uh, sends a crew member to get something from the mess hall. <coughs> In the galley, I, actually, I should say. Bra no, Braxton, for dwarf Braxton, uh, Braxton leans down to the dwarf and says in Dwarven, Hello, can you hear me? He's still unconscious. No one said they were gently waking him up. I'm going to wake him up. <laughs> um, so, like the elf, uh, you see, like, he's he's coming out of... Uh, yeah. Um, Brax like is going to say to him gently in Dwarven, wake up. Dude, wake don't, up. why are you doing it like the hat? Why? Uh, in case he doesn't speak common. We don't have to speak it directly into his ear like a creeper. <laughs> He's not speaking directly into his ear. 
He's just trying to sound non-hostile. Right. Oh. Where am I? What what's been going on? She speaking in common. Yeah. Yeah. Um you are on the blade. Uh, it's a ship operated by the company the Broken Sphere. Sword. Broken uh Broken Sword. <laughs> um We're in the Flodgeston at the moment. We've just rescued you from some Melithids. Uh, he lets two. out a very, very colorful dwarven curse, and then says in in common, uh, "That means we didn't succeed." I'm Ogan. I was a member of the company of the Chalice. We were supposed to be we were working to eliminate some lithid slavers in gray space. Oh, everything's a blur. I guess it means that we didn't succeed. Uh, yes. We just saved you, uh, a gif, an elf, and a bunch of orcs and kobolds from, uh, some, uh, some, uh, lithids. Well, at least I'm alive. Were there any other dwarves in the... among the, the crew of the, the ship that you faced? Sadly not. What sort of ship was it? Uh, the... Their it's ship or ours? Theirs. Uh, their not Lloyd. Lloyd. Hmm. And it was waiting here to ambush us. But, uh... We were lucky. Oh, or we were just really skilled. Uh, that's coming back. I, I think I was... Traded or... Sold a couple times. Oh. Well, we can get you back to the company of the chalice. Yes, yes, yes. I would, I would greatly appreciate that. Where, where did you say you were going? Or space. Oh. I believe we do have a chapter house there. Do you... so it wouldn't be out of your way to drop me off on the anvil. No. Yeah, that's our destination. Excellent, excellent. Uh. Thank you for rescuing me. I've got a lot of work to do ahead of me to try and find if any of my compatriots were survived and try to rescue them. Do you have any idea how long you've been under their control? That's no, not clear, but it's been a few years at least. We uh, We have one of our crew is from gray space, perhaps you could exchange some information about current events when he's awake. Uh, Finn is awake. Out. Finn is awake. Oh, right, okay. You can go to sleep with the rest. Okay. Do you want to send a crew member to uh, fetch him? Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Alright. Alright, so uh, Finn, you uh, you follow the crew member who requests that you come with him? Okay. Um, so you arrive uh, and uh, find uh, an elf and a dwarf, uh, I mean an elf and a gif eating, and a dwarf that appears uh, very, very groggy. And um, the the dwarf looks up at you as you, you enter and, and says, They said that you're from Grayspace? Indeed, I hail from Ginsel. Hmm. Uh... Though it's been a few years since I've been there. So he asks you a couple questions about uh, like what the the uh, events were at the time, um, and you kind of realize that you know by by comparing what he last remembered, um, you'd say it's been uh, four years since he was captured. It's uh, give or take. And he uh, says, uh, "Well, I, I greatly appreciate you you saving me. Uh, could I?" He he looks at the uh, elf and the uh, gif eating. Uh, could I get some of what they're having? Yeah, sure. Um, we were just being a bit cautious because we wanted to make sure the influence of the illithids was off you. Oh, we're going to have I to keep an eye understand. on you for a while. We we do um, much the same in the company of the chalice. Braxton looks over at Oka and 
gives him the look again that he gave him before. The hinting look. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm doing detect evil intent. All right, you are not detect detecting any evil intent from him. Thumbs up. Okay, Braxton unties him. Okay. Um, so you'll probably keep them uh, under watch. Um, yeah. For uh, at least a few days. Yeah. Uh, they they need to they need rest and recuperation from their injuries anyway. But uh, Higmus, uh, Higmus almost seems to have a you know a bit of a light lighter step to him now. Uh, he seems rather pleased and happy that uh, you guys have saved a, a great gift hero in his but eyes. That could be a a misnomer, can it? Because he's also smaller, and lighter. Maybe. He's he's not changed. Seems permanent. All right, so um, not too long after that, uh, you do get your ships separated. So I'm going to take you back to your regular deck plan. And um, I will say that uh, in the process of getting the ships separated and shoring up some of the, you know, the, the hole caused uh -huh. by the, uh, the ramming, um, you will restore one hull point to your vessel. Wow. And that will, of course, use uh, a whole point worth of wood. Yeah. So we're up to 47. Is that like a giant X where the hole is? <laughs> it's like temporary <laughs> boring. Um, you probably would have uh, covered it with canvas. Uh, in part oh, because it, it is the uh, <laughs> bedroom of the... Uh, um, the hell yeah, um, yeah. Braxton had told them to get their stuff out of that room and yeah. uh, move it to Braxton's quarters. Braxton's probably going to sleep in the corner of Higamus's room. Okay. If that's all right with Higamus. Uh, yeah, it's fine with Higamus. It's important to have helmsmen that aren't tired. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um... With the ships separated, um, you mount the uh, your minor helm on the uh, nautiloid. Correct? That's what you were going to do? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. And then Finn is going to uh, uh, pilot it? Yeah. How yep. long have we got before everyone else is going to get up? At least four hours. At least four hours. Yeah. All right. Um... Oh, uh, Brax is going to look out for the magical ring that improves uh, uh, ship movement and say to Finn, hey, hey we've got a ring and we got a potion just in case uh, you have problems on the helm. He's going to look for the potion of spell jamming. Uh, the potion I believe you keep in your helm room in um, a small latched chest yeah. or something like that. I don't well, know. he wants to take that with us just in case okay. if Finn gets knocked out or something. Okay. And we have to move and yeah this is another helmsman come with it with us well i can get on the helm worst case you're asleep so to speak. yeah you're wow. asleep so we could carry you there i planned on going over on that ship i planned on sleeping and then going over well you're in the middle of sleeping and we finished <sighs> okay you, apparently you sam thinks we're not mentioned well i mean well, we could... <laughs> do you want to do you want to be carried over on a stretcher do you do you want the party? Do you want the uh, crew to stop dis you know separating the vessels and wait for another four hours to get you to allow you to sleep? We can wait till we can wait till you. I, all right, let, I, we... <laughs> obviously there's been a loss of communication. I was going to sleep. I was going to go over the ship. They... Right, um... but but so so you finished searching the other ship and doing some other things. Uh, four hours into the eight-hour process of separating the vessels, and I asked you guys, you know, so are you going to sleep now? And you said yes. Mm -hmm. So well, how's because I it? wanted to go with the ship before they destroyed it. Right. How's this? We move. We wait for everyone to wake up. Then we get a final chance to look around the Nautiloid before we destroy it. Because after we move the ship, 
uh, Braxton wants to demount the weapons. He wants uh, some crewmen to come over to man the weapons, just in case we get attacked. I mean, if you end up doing whatever, you end up doing whatever. It's just one of those things. Um, no, what I'm saying is we can still do what you want to do. Yeah. But we won't do it near the Flodgeton pool. Yeah. We'll do it. We'll do it in four hours time, slightly further along, where hopefully we can't get detected. Okay. Uh, is it possible for me to move my icon? Can I carry it? Because I was thinking about getting my spells on the other ship, because otherwise I'm going to be here for like another hour or two. Um, I would say that that would probably disrupt your ability to gain your spells back. Taking the, taking the time to uh, uh, move it and position it on the other vessel and everything like that. All right, let me count up how much time I need. One, two. Okay. Two hours, three, four, oh, God, five hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so, so I mean, yeah, this, this plan's... Can I just say I went to sleep on, on that Nautiloid somewhere? <laughs> nope. All right. Uh... We could carry you over on a stretcher if you read. <laughs> as pretentious as Laftal is, I think that would be degrading. <laughs> I mean... Uh, no. Do you don't have to... No, I have to, because that means I won't get my third level spells. Well, ultimately, I don't need my third level spells today. I just need my first level spells. Well, uh, what I... what third level spells did you want again? Uh, there were a couple of Speak With Deads, but if we're keeping the corpses on our ship for a little while, then I've got days to spare. I'm not sure that your crew is going to appreciate care, you know, having uh, a stack of illithid corpses on your Ship well, just so that you don't can speak with away. <laughs> Why not? I'll do it today. I mean, I, I would prefer just burning them. Oh, we can't burn in the flogiston. Yeah, that. Oh, God. So, so, um, so I prefer to just let drift down in the flogiston. How about? How about? Well, people are asleep at the moment, but uh, how about you cast a speak with dead? spell on an illithid in the catapult <laughs> and then you ask some questions and then we fire it overboard yeah you, we can do yeah, that every day for like a few you, days you, you reduce the amount of dead on the ship yeah my plan was to memorize to speak with deads today oh but... well, how about we keep like four and then we do two today and then we jet just and then why we... there was uh... Based on what happened. Noble, there was a captain. How many in the rest were regular crew, right? Yeah. I think I think um We need the Illithid Noble and the captain at least to get answers out of. The others so... we can just talk. No, right, keep keep six in total. The captain six. We can we can have this we can have this discussion after everyone's woken up. You might also. Is there a spells yeah. you can do to stop dead, dead bodies from sticking? The amount through? we should keep is four. Are there dead bodies you can cast to stop dead bodies stinking? Put them on Not ice. That I have access to. Put them on ice. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> do you have ice? Uh, Alfred's got a dagger that makes ice. Yeah. Oh, Hikamus has a ring. Yeah, Hikamus has a ring that puts puts things in water. Hikamus has a ring that uh, will create some ice that does not last. And yeah. uh, Laptal has a dagger that can create small amounts of ice. We could make a slab of ice and lay out all the illithids on it. <laughs> if Laptal wants to spend <laughs> two days making uh, a slab of ice, uh, you know, I mean, again, you could stay here for another two days. What about... What about um, do you, does Laftal have to be holding the dagger to make it make ice? Yes. All right, because I was thinking, you know, like one bathtub per lithid. <laughs> Mind <laughs> you, that'd be a lot of water we'd be wasting. <laughs> Hang on, let me let me see the speak with that. So, so also, 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 also hold, hold on. So, 
if he stuck the uh, dagger into the bathtub and made ice, it would not yeah. slowly freeze the entire thing. It would freeze a section around the dagger, and that's it. Uh, okay. Fair you make an ice spark. Could uh, Leva use uh, major creation to 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 make more ice out of the existing one? Yeah, but major creation isn't permanent. Yes, but two hours per level would be okay. But you still want to create. You you still you want the ice to last days. Okay. Well, she could, she could uh, cast it more than once. On the other hand, we, I I'm sure we don't want the, the elicits uh, on ice for the next three weeks or four weeks. I think what I would say is that um, people are asleep, so this isn't a problem now. And we're asleep. When to talk. when <laughs> when when people do wake up. Uh, we don't have to do it immediately that day. How many of these spells can you cast per day, um, Sarkid? Uh, technically four. Right. So you may or may not want to take four of these spells a day. And how many elithids have we got? Was it eight? No, no more than like a dozen. More than 12. I only more need like a, a portion of the corpse. Yeah, but like a dozen. A dozen is 12. I could have right? the heads, can I? So to speak. This is getting really, really morbid. You're no, gonna get I'm a just reputation instead... amongst the crew. No, instead of like Yeah, but we don't want to get about... rid of the corpses and we just keep a part of the corpse and then Hang we on, throw the talking... corpse afterwards. We're talking of about we're talking about three days or so of stuff. So we don't have to worry about it now. We just have to worry about it when they start smelling. Yeah. Okay. And if if we interrogate any, and the spell the spell uses up their soul, we get rid of that body, and we keep the rest up when we. Soul. <laughs> I don't know um, how these things I'm work. You, you, we shrink the soul as we you're, question it. you uh, just just um, store the corpses way away from me. So so ho hold on hold on. Um, yeah. well, after, that 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 text that you just that you pasted in there that's from Speak with Dead. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Pushing that are, are you are you noticing a, a certain slight problem that might happen might occur? Hang on. Burning uh, incense. Bur That's not work on the wall. Burning <laughs> incense. <laughs> yeah, burning okay. incense is not something that ha can do can be done in flog flogiston. All right. So all the other corpses are just gonna have to go. We're just gonna somehow have to keep two corpses somehow. <laughs> Well, Leva can help you with it, she, she, but she she can memorize at most two uh, two major creations per day. So hang on, this takes us back to um, this takes us back to the thing of we have to go into brow space momentarily if we want to use this spell. Uh, or st store those corpses uh, until we get to forge space. How fast can we get to the the other crystal sphere, and how long have you got to cast a spell? Two weeks. I'm I sure. I'm, I'm sure what you really want uh, rumors spreading around from your crew as they're you know getting shore leave and getting drunk in the uh, taverns is, oh yeah yeah you should have seen it was disgusting the the people that I hired on with before they had an illithid <laughs> corpse on their ship for weeks oh god it was rank. But, but it didn't stink. Oh, oh. It didn't stink. Hey, uh, Lithid uh, over there, uh, also drinking. Hi, how's it going? What what vessel was that? Oh, uh, excuse me, I gotta go. Doesn't the uh, doesn't the Flodgeston preserve bodies? Uh, n not really. I don't believe it uh, prevents rot. Right. I thought no, people wanted to suspend animation. Though. Yeah, but that's living a things effect. do. Living things go into suspended animation, but someone also that's already they, dead can still rot. Also, also, they would have to be outside the air envelope, basically. For not to rot. <laughs> How, can we not just tow the bodies behind us until we get to full space? <laughs> Alright, we can do one of those rare exceptions where we just forego the whole speak with dead. Yeah, that's like the best unfeasible. Course. Yeah, could do. Because I don't think there's any. Sp I mean, there's. Well, when we're, 
we're not going to learn the uh, potions unless we do identification, because I think I... this will be found off the corpses and potions and stuff. If, if, if we were so. evil party, it wouldn't be a problem to just take, uh, say, the illicit scholars. I mean, I it might them. still be a problem, because again, do you really want that rumor to be going around in places where Illithids may hear about it? I think... Well, um... if we just take the skulls, then we don't actually need to tell the crew that we just took the skulls. Heads, because... not the skulls. Why? It says remain. Uh... The skull on its own is a remain as well. Well, yeah, that implies that you're emptying out the uh, contents. Yeah, that, that way it wouldn't stink or rot. I think yes. we should just uh, dispose of the bodies <laughs> yeah. and just keep going. Well, uh, everyone's asleep at the moment, so it's not something to worry about now. All right, and so... Then, uh... Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, once Laftal gets up, he can make arguments for us going back to Brawl Space. We're not going back to Brawl Space. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, um... You get the uh, the ships uh, moved. Uh, I think you said about fifteen minutes was how long you were going to travel. Yeah. Um, one thing I was wondering about was weakening the ship, but I suppose it wouldn't matter whether we did fifteen minutes or more. So, um, what's our view of the Flodston rivers that are close to the Crystal Sphere portal? If we move fifteen minutes, are they completely gone? Um. Cause... Yes, uh, in that, like, you're seeing different ones now. Right. Okay, so I guess um, 15 minutes isn't isn't a bit of a big deal. Um, yeah, I guess once we've done that, um, Braxton will start running around with his crew and try and weaken the ship and we can wait for four or so hours for people to start waking up. Did you also want to strip some wood from it, as long as you're waiting? Uh, no, we got enough wood. We got enough wood. Um, I was going to strip wood from it. I think we're pretty much maxed out on our what we can get. Okay. Um. Uh, would would weaken in the ship? be significantly faster than trying to strip out wood sort of thing um i because then we don't need to take it out i'm not asking to cheat and get things done quicker i'm just thinking from the point of view of if we're trying to make a wall fall down we don't care whether we damage it well i i think what i would say is is if you're weakening the ship would be more of just fluff kind of thing than yeah. have any kind of mechanical benefit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. it's still going to, you know, it, it would basically just be, a, you'd be spending as long as you want doing that until you get to a point where you feel like you're getting, it's unsafe to be on board the ship moving around. Yeah. That's when you would stop. Although what I do know is that Laftal would express an interest in looking around. Had Laftal said to Braxton what bit he wanted to look at, uh, or just said certain something. officer rooms, basically. Of that nautiloid. Basically anywhere that's not regular crew. Or... I mean, again, it's just kind of... If you're weakening the ship, it's just going to be kind of fluff, so... So would, to a certain extent, removing the, you know, removing planks. I wouldn't be the same. Oh. oh, yeah, you're, you're, you've taken out the planks here. You can't get into that room anymore. That, that's, eh. yeah. What we, what we can do is we can um, derig all the weapons now. Yeah. All right. And get them off. And um, Braxton wants to get the ship name plates off. Okay. Um, wants to make it look like uh, they haven't just been taken off. That that part of the ship's been destroyed. All right. So if some crew get to work uh, smashing the uh, the wood around that that part with like weapons, yeah, maces and stuff like that. All right, and axes. Okay. Hammer time. All right. Um. So yeah, you can go ahead and mark down the uh, the weapons if you haven't yet. 
Sorry? You can you can go ahead and mark down the weapons if you haven't yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hadn't done that. I know what they are. Okay. Thank you. Let's see what I had written down. I think I put this on my own sheet, which is cheating. Um... <laughs> So I have written down medium jettison, a medium catapult, and three medium ballistas. Correct. Yeah. And that'll be a... That'll be a pack down, won't they? Uh, yeah, but they, they do take uh, two tons per of space per... And we left a little bit of ammo with them, didn't we? Because we took the other ammo already. Yeah, I'd, I'd say three shots each. Right. Although, I mean, there isn't jettison shot, it's just, like, yeah. debris and stuff, so you don't... Yeah, we won't get anything. Yeah. We'll leave. We won't bother with that. We can make our own jets and stuff. All right, so uh, while the crew is working on that and um, strategically weakening, weakening points so you hope that it breaks up uh, more easily, um, about an hour after you've uh, moved the vessels, there is a, uh, a scream from a crew member up on deck um, mm -hmm. and uh, some shouts, uh, and you hear uh, a crew member... Uh, call out flow fiends flow fiends get under cover flow fiends so i would assume that uh, you and higamus would uh, rush up to the deck yep and yep. you would see um large bodied humanoids with four arms uh one of them has uh, already tossed a, a crew member who appears uh, uh, to be injured and bleeding and slowly drifting out of the uh, air envelope uh, off of uh, one of the vessels. And they are moving in to um, get to the other crew members uh, who are fleeing for their lives because they already know that uh, these things cannot be hurt by their weapons. Right. initiative time. Is yep. uh, Ocker coming? Or is he going to sleep? Uh, he didn't say that he went to sleep. Ocker? Uh, what? Are you coming to fight the Flow Fiends? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm running up as well. I take How it we are still asleep. Yep. Finn was probably Finn? just about to get into bed, but he's uh, he'll come running up. Alright. So let me get up the... Do-do-do... Uh... Yeah, turn order. Right. Let's not uh, let's not use the magical exploding sword. I think it's battle next time. Varandra will uh, join in as well. Um. So just find you can you can move your token wherever you want. I'm not going to actually like use the. Uh... Okay. Um, so, where are we? Are we in the upper deck with the little ship? You're just rushing out to uh, help, so I'm not. I'm not going to be uh, requiring you to position yourselves in specific places. Oh, okay. okay. But I'd be assuming it'd be the uh, front deck then. It's it's in various places. Um, so again, like I'm not going to require you to position your your characters because. This is just theater of the mind. Yeah, positions don't matter in, in, in this situation. Okay. So, Leva, Solus, and Laftal are asleep. Unless someone sends someone to wake them up, I'm going to assume that they stay asleep. Thank you, Elvis. Yeah, we're going to try and keep everyone asleep. And Hegemus will join in as well. All right, anyone still need to roll? Okay. Uh, Viraggio is up on deck, apparently, and... I'm just going to 
move them out here so I can keep track of their hit points. And uh, she rushes to uh, give some cover to one of the uh, uh, crew member who is just about to be attacked. Swings her warhammer. And hits. So, just so you know, I'm going to position her in front of the uh, the ones that um, they're facing. Mm-hmm. Um, you've you've already brought the uh, the nautiloid, so so basically you're you're alongside the nautiloid, so it's it's like you know across the, uh, the open decks of yeah. both vessels. Yeah. So we might even have a boarding plank out there. Oh yeah, you you would you would have um, pretty substantial boarding planks so that the uh, crew can easily easily get from one to the other. So Varadra smashes her hammer into one of them, and uh... is it still the same that we fought the Elethids, right? I'm sorry. Is it still the same that we fought the Elethids? Yes. Okay. All right, Finn. Uh, Finn will run out and take a s- swing at one that isn't occupied at the moment. Okay. With the scimitar. Alrighty. So, Finn, you have probably not seen these before, and that is a hit. Uh, they're humanoid in shape, but uh, um, grossly deformed. They have four arms and very wide mouths. And the one that you're facing uh, actually kind of looks like it has pointed elf-like ears. Mm. Ten damage. Very nice. You uh, hack into it with your uh, scimitar. Uh, the Flofiends are uh, advancing up. Um, the one facing Varadra is going to uh, slash at her with its four claws. Uh, and... She is rather lucky and only gets hit by one. For two points of damage. Alright. The one that Higamus has uh, made his way towards uh, and, and planted himself in front of is going to attack him. And Higamus takes... Three hits from these claws. And it seems to have uh, gotten its arms around uh, Higamus now. And his arms are pinned. Lovely. It takes 11 damage. All right, Finn, the uh, one facing you uh, looks none too pleased at having been slashed with your scimitar, and it is trying to get you. What is your armor class? Three. Okay, you manage to dodge most of its claws, but one of them does uh, tear into your flesh for two points of damage. That wasn't very nice of him. (laughs) <laughs> and before anyone else can uh, uh, close in to, on the uh, um, uh, the creatures uh, another crew member gets tossed overboard uh, with, yeah. a, with a with uh, a scream well that'd be that'd be that one that's not got any more fighting it here yeah all right, Higginus. Uh... Oh, are we still? We're not moving, are we? Uh you would just move your tokens to indicate which ones you're attacking. No, I mean the ship, because we're right. The ships aren't moving, so we should be able to recover them if they're not dead. Hopefully, that's something you can try when uh, you have a little bit less to worry about <laughs> in front of you. Yeah, <laughs> Braxton cares about his crew, even though they don't have names. All right, Higamus, unfortunately, is uh, pinned, but he is going to try and uh, headbutt the 
one in front of him. And he hits. But it doesn't seem to have been affected. All right, Ocker. Okay, I'm going to be running at one with my sword to strike. And Bamel's going to be helping me out. So, uh... Let's see, 1d20. Okay, that's a hit. Which one were you attacking? The uh, the one that tossed a crew member overboard? Yeah. Okay. Is that's... it large? Uh, yes. Okay. Let's move you in front of that token. Alright, eight points of damage. What weapon were you using? Long sword. Okay. And uh, that's a plus one weapon. Yep. And then Babel's <coughs> Babel's moving in to uh, bite. All right. Uh, that is a miss. Okay. All right, Braxton. Braxton comes running out. I suppose. Well, he was with Higamus, wasn't he? So I guess I could be going for this one. Well, I mean, you might have been uh, at a different place on the uh, vessel looking at... That's something. true. That's true. Um, well, let's be with Finn then. Um, Braxton comes out, presses button two on the stick. All right. And uh, tries to chop into one of them. All right, that's a hit. And that's... Uh, That's, uh, so that was the axe form, correct? Yeah, that's the axe. D, D8 plus 5. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's better. So you uh you chop into it. This thing has taken max damage from two people. That's uh that's pretty great. Uh you chop into it with your axe, um and it looks none too pleased at either of you. Uh so second attack from Ocker. Uh, yeah, I guess second attack. Okay. That's a mess. Yep. All right. So uh, next round. Most of the crew is uh, gotten to safety at this point. Yeah, Braxton probably suggests they uh, bolt the door. Okay, anyone still need to roll? Give me a second. Here we go. Yeah. Alright. Um, these things the crew can't fight. Mm -hmm. Can they hold, hold doors shut? Yeah. And they could they could always uh, um, do things that don't inflict damage, like uh, push them off or, or something like that. Um, yeah. And that's what a crew, what crew on a uh, like a trading vessel that doesn't have any magic weapons would do. Yeah. But it's almost inevitable that such an attack would still cause significant losses. Yeah. No, I'm just thinking they could go inside and and shut the doors and hold the doors shut. Yeah. Uh, Varadra, but if you weren't there, then they would need to actually do something. Yeah. Uh, Viradra, uh, unfortunately, misses. Finn, your turn. Alright. That is a hit. 
Ah. There's the one I've been waiting for. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it, uh, it had to happen, didn't it? I think my dice might be bipolar. <laughs> All right, the uh, creatures uh, begin to slash at uh, those around them. Uh, the one uh, facing Varadra attacks her and gets a hit for seven points of damage. Uh, the one on Higamus. It starts uh, squeezing, and it bites at him. Hickamus is knocked out. Uh, this uh, creature squeezes him and uh, bites with its uh, great gaping maw, tearing a big chunk of flesh from his uh, right near his throat. So he's gushing blood and unconscious, and the uh, uh, creature looks ready to move on to someone else. Ocker, your okay. turn. And keep attacking. And that uh, is a miss. And for Bamulf. All right, that is a miss as well. Braxton. Right, um, Braxton's going to have... Mm. Is Hickamus near enough for Braxton to see him go down? Oh, yeah. Okay, the Braxton will go and engage with this one then, and he gets two attacks. Okay. Or is he still allowed to have two attacks if he moves? Yeah, you, you can still get those two attacks. Oh, hopefully a hit. What's your attacker? Uh, eight. That is a hit. This. Right, let's see if I can roll properly this time. All right, nine points of damage. You uh, chop into that one. Uh, it actually looks like it's re getting ready to uh, try and toss uh, Higamus uh, overboard. Yeah. Um, is there anything Braxton could do to stop him picking Higamus up? Uh, not a whole lot right now. Right. All right, so well, Ocker, second attack. All right. That is it. For three points of damage. All right. And Braxton, second attack for you. All right. That is a hit. Okie dokie. <laughs> All the ones. I love it. Yeah, it's not so bad, is it? <laughs> this has got a plus five for this. Um, can Braxton call out to the crew? If, if you can get outside, use a rope to drag people in. Um, you don't really hear an acknowledgement from the uh, the crew there. Yeah. They, they've 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 barred the doors as much as possible and everything like that. Okay. All right. So next round. Let me set Higgins to a ninety nine. Oh, 
And anyone still need to roll? Awkward, did you roll? Uh, no. Sorry. I'll do it. Okay. All right, Viradra swings her uh, hammer at the one she is facing and misses. Akra, your turn. Okay. I'm going to do my turn, then uh, BRB. All right, I'll take care of your second attack, then. Okay. What's uh, attack that goes 12. Uh, that is a I miss. I know it's 11, I think. That is a miss. All right, Finn, your turn. Oh, wait, my, uh, and then uh, for uh, oh. Bamel. All right, well, that's a miss, unfortunately. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, nice. All right, well, double damage dice as I uh, roll to see. Oh, okay. That is a, uh, is a saving throw failure on its part. All right, so 11 points of damage. You uh, slash into it with your scimitar. And let's see what happens. All right, well, you did a high slash, and um, you slashed across the top of its um, skull, its face. Uh, you see it blood gushing into its eyes, and it, it kind of reels back, and you see it kind of flailing uh, as the, uh, the blood gets into its eyes. Uh, Braxton, your turn. Okay. Braxton's gonna make another attempt at chopping this thing. He doesn't want him to throw Higamas overboard. Oh! <laughs> that. That might be good. I'm, I'm, I'm beginning to wonder if, if Finn's dice are infectious. Because <laughs> you get ones and then other people get ones. You get a 20 and other people get 20s. <laughs> Uh, maybe so maybe he's you, you, he's paid for the special. You roll another you roll another d d eight. Oh yeah, sorry. I was so excited, I forgot to see them both. So thirteen damage. Okay. Chop, 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 chop. All right. The uh, the one facing Viradra is going to uh, attack her. Gets one hit for six points of damage. Um, the one that you're facing, Braxen, mm -hmm. it does manage to uh, lift Higmas' uh, bleeding body and toss it overboard. Damn. These uh, things are strong. Yes, yes they are. Um, the one attacking you, Finn, it's flailing, trying to claw at you. Um, but you have an easier time dodging it. There's a lot of fours that I just rolled. I literally rolled four, four, five, four. On four d20s. <laughs> so, you, uh, you managed to uh, dodge all of its attacks. And then the one attacking Ocker... Does get two hits. For 23 points of damage. Twenty-three. Yikes. Alright, so Ocker gets a second attack. You do not, correct, Braxton? Not this round, no. Alright, Ocker hits. So... Three for two. For 
are at nine points of damage. Axes. Well, you're already specialized in swords, so you can't yeah. get anything else. All right. So there's a... So I'm back in the... It's a problem. I've already used my lay hands for today. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. took 23 points of damage. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit of damage. A little bit of damage. Did I hit yeah. this thing with my other attack? Uh, yes, you did. You did uh, um, nine points of damage. And uh, Higamus is bob bobbing up and down like a cork with the other crewman. He's been thrown overboard. All right, roll okay. for initiative. Yeah. Well, at least you rolled well. All right, Braxton. Oh, first again, right. Braxton really, really, really wants to chop this thing. Okay, go ahead. That is a hit. Yep. Yeah. So at 10 points of damage, you slash into it. It is still on its feet. Ocker, your turn. This thing won't go down. Braxton will have to hit it again. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to swing. You said you have a 9, Thacko? I have an 11, Thacko, oh, with 11 a sword. Uh, that is a miss. And for Bamel. Yeah. Also a miss. All right, Varadra is going to swing her Warhammer. And she does hit. She smashes it in the knee with the hammer. Uh, Finn, your turn. Okay. That is a miss. All right, the uh, Flofiends, the one that just tossed uh, Higamus overboard, is uh, trying to slash at you. It gets one hit, Braxton, uh -huh. for nine points of damage. The one facing Varadra gets two hits. Oh. For 11 points of damage. Uh, Varadra is not looking so hot. And the one facing you, Finn. Gets one hit. For 10 points of damage. Claws into you, uh... Tearing into your, your torso. Uh, it is still um, blinded by its blood, so it was a, a lucky hit on its part. And the one facing you, Auker, gets two hits for 11 points of damage. Well, if I get hit one more time, I'm going to drop. Uh, Not did good. Do I get my second attack? Uh, yes. And ah! Is a miss. Uh, Braxton, you get your second attack now, too? Yep. Alright. Well, that's a hit, isn't it? Yep. Oh. Why isn't the crew up here helping us? Oh. Because they can't harm them? The crew can the crew can go wake someone up if we want. Alright, eight points of damage. Yeah, is this thing still up? No, you slash it with the axe, uh, and oh. it collapses down on the ground on the deck. 
I just did this have to happen on the same day we just fought a lithids. Yeah. Um, Braxton sort of waggles his head from side to side, looking to see who needs a hand the most. Um, Ocker and Varadra both look pretty nasty, uh, pretty heavily wounded. Yeah. How about the uh, the things fighting them? Do they look equally damaged? Uh, no, it looks like Akira has uh, inflicted more wounds on the one that he is facing. Right. Okay. So Braxham might be able to guess that he it would be easier to kill that one. Uh, perhaps. Yeah. Okay. I'll probably help Walker then. Okay. If, if we kill that one, then that frees two of us up. All right. So roll for initiative. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Varadra swings first at the one trying to smash its uh, kneecap again. She does hit. Nice. For seven damage. Alright, Ocker, your turn. Yeah. Uh, swinging. Yeah. That is a miss. Well, I'm damned. Uh, I mean, it might miss. Uh, the one facing Varadra gets one hit for three points of damage. The one facing Finn, still blinded by the uh, blood gushing from its uh, bleeding head wound. Gets one hit. Lucky, well, lucky-ish. Uh, only uh, nicks you for one point of damage, Finn. And the one facing you, Ocker. It also only gets one hit. Four points of damage. Oh, thank God. All right, Braxton, your turn. Right. Um... Did Braxton have to say a word to suck life out of things he fight, fights against? Uh, no, it's just an act of will. Okay. Um, well, Braxton's a bit weak, so... He's going to... come at this guy. And uh, see if he can suck some life out of him. Alright, you do manage to touch it. And okay. roll 2d4, please. Okay, you inflict 7 damage, and that is added to your total. Uh, 6 damage, I'm sorry. Thanks. Okay. Finn, your turn. Okay, unfortunately, uh, um, the uh, the blood gushing from the head wound on this thing uh, has apparently come down the blade of your uh, scimitar, uh, slicked up your hand, and your scimitar goes... Oh, nice. Okay. I've been saving those for a while now. <laughs> All right, so you, uh, you redeem a critical hit for yourself to re <laughs> replace That's that good. one. That's good. I sense some self-preservation going on there. <laughs> maybe a little. Maybe a little. Maybe a little. Uh, and let's see. Okay. Yeah, it's just going to be double damage dice. All right, 11 damage. And I, I continue to keep rolling at extremes. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Um, so you, you start to lose your grip on the scimitar, but... Um, 
just as it feels like it's slipping out of your your hand, you uh, flip your wrist in just the right spot and give a slash on the uh, belly of this creature, opening it up, and it collapses down on the ground. Yay! I think I need a bot to watch all its streams for me, since I'm usually not available <laughs> so I can build up hams. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Second attack from Ocker. Please hit. Please hit. Oh, hey, the dice listened. They usually don't. Yeah, that's pretty good. 11 damage. It's still up. Of course it is. That's my luck. All right. Next round. There are two of these uh, left. Roger is looking in really bad shape. And he's shift time again. Yep. He's not the only one. Uh, I suppose I'm back to one and two again. Seeing as I stole some life. Ah, uh, yes. I mean, you can keep stealing life. So you use charges? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then you can keep stealing life. Yeah. It's up to you. Uh, you are up first. Right, okay. So, Braxton's going to try to chop up the one that's trying to get Ocker. Okay. Ooh. That is a miss. Yeah, he was distracted by by um, seeing Finn nearly fall over and then gut the guy. He didn't nearly fall over, he just nearly dropped his sword. All right, nearly dropped his sword. Alright, Varadra is uh, swinging her Warhammer. And does hit. And uh, as she's doing so, she does say, I could use some assistance. As the flow fiend facing her tries to uh, rip into her flesh. And it does manage to succeed. And she collapses down under the assault. Uh, lost. And is bleeding. Finn, your turn. Uh, Finn's going to jump between her and the one she was facing then. Okay. Take a shot at him. Nice. That is a hit. Hey, right. it's not a one or an eight. Five points of damage. All right, Ocker, your turn. Yeah, I'm swinging. Sure. All right. Please hit. Nope. That is a nope. Uh, but you get a second attack. Oh, and uh, Bjormulf. Uh, that's going to be my second attack. That go is 11. Uh, that was for Bjormulf. Oh. So, second, your second attack. Also. Can we just put the 10 as my second attack and just have BMW be the 5? Uh, sure. You miss. Even even when my attack goes 11? Mm -hmm. These things have a attack of 0. These things have an AC of 0. Damn. Maybe. No, it's... Well, may I maybe, they, maybe they've resisted certain weapons. A plus one weapon. I've been doing damage to them up till now. Ugh. Whatever. Uh, next round. Hmm. 
I, I will admit that I was expecting uh, um, Hagamus to, to not take that massive amount of damage that he did. Mm. Okay. Uh, Braxton, you're up first. Okay. Let's try and hit the thing this time. At least we get two hits. Mm -hmm. uh, Taco? Eight. That is a hit. Alright, nine points of damage. Die, oh, you damn thing. <laughs> So, Finn, you have uh, put yourself uh, over Varadra. So the uh, Flow Fiend uh, tries to tear at you, uh, since that's the only way it'll be able to throw Varadra overboard. It manages to hit you for two points of damage. Ocker, a one facing you, gets one hit. Four points of damage. I'm on HP. All right, Finn, your turn. All right, time to return the favor. And you are. Mm. That's another hit. <laughs> Dang. These are some hot uh -huh. dice. Ten points of damage. Pretty good. It's apparently angry that they interrupted him going to bed. Apparently so. <laughs> Ocker. Oh. Alright, so uh, you lose a grip on your sword. It goes uh, clattering along the deck. Uh, but uh, uh, Beowulf does manage to uh, get his teeth into its uh, leg and tear into the flesh, so go ahead and roll for damage. Yeah, so uh, Bjolmulf uh, rips its leg off, um, and it collapses down on the ground, um, black blood seeping onto the deck. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Bjolmulf to be tasting is like Barely standing, your weapon on the floor, and Belmuth just like hero of the moment, mm. <laughs> just just tears it a new one. Yeah. Um. So, Ocker, since you've uh, dropped your weapon, you do not get your second attack. That's uh, fine. I'm barely alive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Braxton, you get your second attack, I believe. Yay! So I guess Braxton will move over to this one. That is a hit. That goes eight. Right. I must stop doing roll D star. Would probably help. Would probably help. Yeah. All right, 11 points of damage. All right, next round. Okay. Okay, so can I pick? Can I go pick up the sword and then get back in the fight? Uh, you can, but you do see Varadra bleeding out. Then I'm gonna switch to my spear. All right. Wait, is he on the ground bleeding? Yes. Yeah, um, Higamus is in a I bad way as well. I don't have healing proficiency. Uh, you don't need to. You can just bandage wounds, and that stops the bleeding. What do I roll for that? Um, you don't. That's just your turn. Okay, then I'll I'll run over to try to stop the bleeding of Varadra. Okay. Because I can't get to Higamus. Yeah, Higamus is over the deck. Alrighty. Braxton, you're up first. Yeah. Okay. Braxton's going to have another swing at this thing. And he's going to call, call out to the crew... 
Get out here and chop these things up before they wake up. That is it. All right, and you, with one downward uh, cut from your axe, you sink the uh, the blade into its uh, shoulder by its neck, and it collapses down on the ground. Um, the crew rushes out and says, uh, um, "Chop uh, these things up; they're going to regenerate." Right, and we need some people with ropes. We need to pull in the crew and get them healed quickly. The uh, they need to be burned. Chopping them up uh, won't really do much. Mm, well, a bit hard to burn. Did you forget where we are? <laughs> we are in the Flodgerson. So, it's a, I, the crew member who said, said that they need to be burned get, kind of gives you a shrug and says, hey, it's just what needs to be done. Yeah. Well, chopping them up might slow them down a bit. So um, some of the crew are uh, tossing lines out to the crew that have gone over that are conscious, um, and some of them are... Uh... Braxton wants to tie his magic rope to the ship, All right. and uh, he's going to attach the other bit to Higamus. Okay. And pull Higamus in. So um, real fast... Uh... Ocker, you do manage to uh, bind Varadra's wounds, so she's not bleeding out anymore. And Braxen, you uh, instruct your rope oh. to uh, snag Higamus and uh, pull him. He's not going to be able to pull him over the rail, is he? Because he's too heavy. You can you can get some of your gift to help. Yeah. Okay. Right, so I'm you're... just thinking need to do first aid on him quick. All right. Just jump overboard. Yeah, Brax and a jump jump overboard to stuck get in gravity well. It I mean follow. it would be kinda hard to, to do first aid bottom right. about okay. the gravity well. Okay, well then we'll get the gift to pull him in then. Alright. So you command your rope to uh uh loop around Higamus's leg and yeah. uh, pull him in. Uh, the gif help him uh, up on deck, and he is not breathing. He was unconscious for like six rounds. So he probably died if he went to like minus five to minus eleven. We don't have CPR in uh, D and D, do we? <laughs> I mean, I don't think there's anything my herbalism can do. There's there's a a giant gash in his right by his neck. So I mean, if there's anything that you want to try, we can try bandaging that. You can. It's... And probably have to send someone to get. Hmm. Who do we wake up? Solus or Leftal? Does it really matter at this point? <laughs> well, we don't know he's dead. Well, well no, I spells? mean, my my point is, if someone's dying, you'd wake us up regardless. Yeah, Salt yeah, their yeah. sleep. Yeah. yeah, all right. Send a crew to wake both of them up, or just one? Mm. All I know is that I'm going to go lie down because I'm almost dead. Yeah, probably both of them. Also, we need to drag Agamus back on board. Yeah, they, they did. No, they're they're looking at him right board. now. Okay. He's not breathing. So you're sending crew to wake up both uh, Laptal and Solus. Yeah. Okay. Tell them Higamus is dying. Get down here. All right, Solus and Laptal, you're uh, woken up by pounding on your door. Uh, Laftel's extremely goggy, like, what? What's going on? Yeah, so last is pretty... The captain well, is injured well, badly. Well, we need you down to do what you can. Oh, she Laftel springs out of bed. <laughs> He's never sprung out of bed. Probably headbutts the floor. 
<laughs> stumble over the, the uh, you, you, you you like stumble over the uh, um, the blankets as they're they're wrapped around your legs and uh, kicking them off and and rush out your out of your uh, door up to the main deck. Loftus, yeah, well he he's kind of like I need something to heal with. Um, but, uh, I don't. You grab really hold of it. You get you grab guards or whatever is nearby. Yeah, allows me like grab his healer bag. I can I shout to one of the crew and just say go to the um go to the the uh, what do you call that the hold where we keep all our stuff and just say grab all the potions out there. I don't think that they have access to that stuff. Mm, yep. No, one of us but... can do that when you get there. Yeah, but no one's down there. I mean, in the combat situation, I mean, you, could, you to... could tell one of the crew to go have one of the player characters run to the hold. Uh, no, I I just go up, I guess. It's, I go up my healer's kit because that's the only thing I got. And maybe potions, but I don't think I can feed potions to an unconscious person. I know this. No, you can't. Uh, is Roger at least still breathing? She is breathing. She is an, She's unconscious. Okay, so I stopped her from dying. Yes. Alright, Laughter runs up with a Cedo's kit because that's pretty much anything he had time to grab, I guess. You probably I mean, you see have... that everybody's beat beat the hell and back. Yep, yeah. yeah uh, the uh, the players all look in a rather bad shape. <laughs> I'm barely standing. So as I there. run there and look at Higamus, I'm like, does he look? <laughs> Give me a as soon as one of them comes out, Brax is going to go, over here! And after runs over his healing kit, probably slipping over all the blood. Yeah, give me a uh, healing proficiency check, please. <laughs> Not a dex check. <laughs> probably needs a dex check, considering this. A dex check to avoid you sliding over and landing on him. He is dead. After just... Uh, oh. After, yeah, and after all said, he's dead. Why didn't you wake us? Because we wanted you to be able to regain your spells. We thought we could handle it. <sighs> Obviously, I can't blame you for that. But, I mean, if it's life or death, just wake us. Well, we thought we could handle it at the time. I know, he just I know. hit so it's hard a... so quickly. It was hard to... We didn't know what to do. And once you're in combat, it's hard to uh, do some things. Yeah, once the fight has died. I don't know, I managed to get the jump on him. Well, to be honest, Solas would not have been able to do much during combat. Yeah, I basically, I didn't, I kind of knew we had a, an ointment, but I didn't know what that ointment was. I was going to try pot luck and hope that I was killing his ointment. No. That cream that we had. Sinway has the has the ointment. No, not that one. The one we recently got. That is a cream. Okay. I was just gonna try a hedge guess and just guess that it is that. Well, crap. <sighs> what about the other crewmen? Uh, the other crew that were tossed overboard, uh, they are alive. Yeah, we'll work on getting them back onto the ship. Uh, I'm also going to have Laftal look at Radra, who I was barely able to save. Well, uh, while Laftal is looking for Faradra, Solas will look after the... Uh, I mean, while Laftal is looking after Higimus or checking if he's alive, uh, Solas will be looking after Faradra. All right. Uh... She is, um, she's alive, um, but it does look like she was very close to death. I will use my healer's bag. All right. Try and treat her wounds a bit better. All right. I did what, I, I tried to stop the bleeding as fast as I could. And you did good, she is still alive. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll so just basically in, make in, the bandages 
in I game did. terms, um, you would realize that uh, uh, Ocker stopped her from bleeding out at negative nine. Yeah. How much did Tigamus go down to? Because I figured that he was at like minus something, then there was like five rounds of bleeding out. I forgot a couple rounds, but he hit negative ten uh, just before the fight ended. Yeah. And that was with forgetting a couple rounds, so. Well. Well, this is a dark joke, but I guess, uh, mm. I guess Braxton's captain a bit earlier than we thought. Wow, that just happened. <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. I've got nothing. Literally no means of doing anything. As a wise yeah, person says. No revival spells, does he? Even if you have raised dead, I don't think it works on a monster. Raise dead only works on demi-humans other than elves. You'd need a resurrection Higmas is, for Higmas. Yeah. Well, if it... We got him yeah. brought back before, but we've got no access to the gods out here. We'd have to go back in the sphere. We might have to do a speak with Dead once we get out of here to figure out what he wants us to do with him. I mean, you can talk to uh, Thogus, who is another. Uh, yeah, let's go ask Thogus what we should do. It seems like our best course of action. Any objections? No. Is everyone going? Mm, no objections. Salas is treating the wounded. Okay. Yeah, Laftal is as well, trying his best to. Yeah, and rest of our life. And so last um, also... we need to get rid of we need to get rid of these flow fiends. Um, so, so last last we'll order... just gonna take them aside. He's just gonna say, "I've I got the life. I'll just burn them up. I'll get singed myself, but at least I'll be dead." Oh, I suppose I can do that with my die. sword. So, so last, so last organizes. Uh... Faradra to be taken to her quarters uh, without uh, disturbing the wounds. Okay. And Solas will also try to treat uh, treat uh, Okar. Alright, go ahead and give me a uh, healing check. Alright, so you gain one hit point there, Okar. Great, I'm at two now. Thank you. Well, well, you we... should be able to rest easier. 100% mm. more hit points. <laughs> Are all four the flow fiends here and most of the body parts here? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I will try and take them to the least uh, populated area and the easily, easily most repairable section of the ship. Well, <laughs> you have the nautiloid right next to you. Yeah, let's take oh. them to the All right, yeah, I just... Put them on a nautiloid. Brax gonna come I'm over with you because he's got a flaming sword. I mean, so I've just... got vials of acid, but I need something. I need more than this, don't I? I've got it too. What well, I use for a lock. Could I uh, Braxton, on their neck. Bra uh, you would need. You would need to basically dip submerge them in acid. Them. Yeah, submerge them in acid. Braxton says to. Um, uh, Rex, it says to left all. What if we poured smoke powder on them and then set light to that? The fire would have to get to the smoke powder. And yeah. he would be next to the smoke powder and that would be catastrophically bad. Right. Okay. For us. Yeah. I mean, Rex is gonna Rex is gonna give each one of them a couple of chops while we're talking. Oh yeah, yeah, left all's continuously stabbing into them. Alright, so you two are going to take them over to the Nautiloid, um, a section that uh, you don't plan to try and uh, get anything out of? Yeah. No. Yeah. And Sorry. then when you're I there... I am going to use my dagger. I assume I would have had my wrist sheath dagger. Yeah, that's fine. And I guess I'll just 
stab it and say the command word away from Brax. So That's a strange gonna... command word. <laughs> yeah, because mine's command word based. No, but the command word is away from Braxton. Wow. <laughs> so, um, are you going to try to cause an explosion that gets all of their bodies, or are you doing one at a time? No, one at a time. Yeah. And Braxton, are you going to start the like with a, a second one, so each one of you takes two? Yeah, yeah. I guess. Well, we'll see after the first one how nearly dead I'm going to be. I'm at full lives almost. I took fire damage, so I want to reach out that last bit. So, well, what, what, um, how much blowback is there from Laftal's knife versus Braxton's sword? It's gonna be more on your sword. Well, you could give Braxton the knife, um, and he could do all the stabbing and take all the damage. Well, I, I assume that you're not in the most healthiest. Uh, state uh, he's, he's whereas I'm worse. pretty I, I'm almost as good as it gets yeah but your good as it gets might not be as high as Brax I'm at 38 what are you at What's this do? meta oh wow really <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah you've got uh, wow. lots of hit points <laughs> now we're, we're doing two each that All was right. the plan anyway regardless I'm just okay. gonna go at Go over and take one. I'll, let, I'll do mine first. See how how it plays out. Okay. All right. So the, you go to the first one. I've got like my clothing on, so this is going to be a very naked laughter after this. Well, you burnt closed. You know, it's gonna. Okay. So uh, you stab into one and uh, issue the command word. Uh... Mm -hmm. and um, there is a great whoosh of flame that wraps around you, and you take seven points of damage. Ouch. Oh, so that isn't so bad. I thought it would be worse than that. All right. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. And then the second one? Yeah. All right. You do the same to the second one, and another ball of fire erupts around you for ten points of damage. Mm, left will stand to half life, but got rid of two of them. Your turn. All right. Okay. Well, Braxton will retract his weapon, and then he'll go at arm's length and hold the rod up against one, and then press button one while it's still. Still um, touching one. Okay. So it normally does. They're not large, are they? They are large. They are large because yeah. it does one d8. If there's yeah, small... but the fire damage probably isn't out the fire. Oh no, no, no. But what I mean is, if, I think it all does double damage or something like that. So I don't know whether it makes any difference. Oh, I'm using fire effects in the phlogiston and going with a what I consider the nearest uh, sized okay thing. Uh, so you stick this, the, um, the rod right up against it, press a button to create the flaming sword. Yeah. Uh, you feel the sword blade slice into it, and then there's a much bigger whoosh of flame as, uh, fires surround you. You take nine points of damage. Ouch. Do you want to use my dagger for the last one? That's less beamy. <laughs> Well, did I, your dagger actually destroy the bodies? I haven't had time to observe the bodies for long enough. We're doing this systematically, I assume. I well, would assume that you're doing this uh, essentially simultaneously. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, after doing one, Braxton will look at one that the first one that Laftal did to see if it looks more destroyed. Um, Is it regenerating? It's hard to say, but... Uh, um... I'll put it this way. Uh, Laftal's fireball was about three feet in diameter. And Braxton, yours was about ten feet in diameter. <laughs> okay, Braxton will do the other one the same way. Question. Mm -hmm. wouldn't, uh, wouldn't he get both at once if he said, if he put them side by side or on top of each other? Uh, he didn't say that he was trying to make sure that he got them side by side. Oh, wow. I know Oz was done that. Ass. No, he did. Oz did say at the start, if you're trying to get them all together. 
Yeah. That's that's what curse you for having good ideas. <laughs> no, that was Let's the just... being generous of that. <laughs> Don't forget Levi's still asleep. She's yeah. talking in her sleep. Having having some weird dream about your friends uh, incinerating themselves and you're not even yes. there to watch them lose their clothes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <sighs> All right. Meanwhile, so with nothing with nothing better to do, Finn's gonna head off to bed. Okay. Akar's yeah, Walker, so... limping over the bed. Once once Solas is certain that uh, there is no one else dying uh, and uh, all the wounded are resting, he also goes <laughs> back to rest. All right. So Braxton, you uh, um, uh, let's uh, as that that, that fireball uh, happens, you you have the uh, wherewithal to press the button to uh, uh, withdraw the sword blade. Yeah. And you go to do the second one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hold the. Uh, rod up to it, press the button, and another 10-foot diameter uh, sphere of fire washes over you. And you take 18 points of damage. <laughs> I think that one's dead. Yeah. But the ones that I were on, I'm just gonna observe them for a minute. Maybe, actually no, about 10 minutes, because I know how my ring regeneration works, even though I'm not wearing it at the moment. Oh, wow. Yeah. You don't wear it and you sleep. Well, no, I would have specifically taken it off at this moment, knowing that I could potentially lose the re regeneration. And I know it doesn't regenerate fire damage, so. Right. All right. I think that's probably a good place to uh, take our uh, 10 minute break. Yeah. As uh, Laftel and uh, Braxen have incinerated themselves. <laughs> lost our captain. For the and yeah. the yes, yes, no you lost captain. your captain. And everyone's going to go to bed and leave Braxen to stay up all night. No. Yeah. Well, the rest of us are either near dead or tired and need sleep for spells. Well, I, if yeah. people come back after the break, they can see the Illithids arriving to attack us. I mean, oh, just to point Again. out, just to point out, yeah, Braxton isn't quite as bad as Ocker, but that was 18 damage from fire that he did just take after taking nine. True. So, Braxton, you should come rest as well and let the crew handle things. <laughs> someone's um, got to be, uh, someone's got to be awake. Yeah, Beowulf can be awake. He'll come, <laughs> he'll come can't, tackle can't you if something him. happens. We're making Beowulf the first officer. No, you just stay awake until Levers rests, I suppose. <laughs> Alright, Ocker will stay awake with you. Alright, but we will be back in about uh, 10 minutes. So, uh, and get something to drink, get something to eat, and we'll see you then.